I wanted to start today's message with a reading. Now, about nine months ago, I subscribed to this wonderful ministry. It's uh, conducted by Reverend Scott Aubrey. He's in, in Colorado. He's a religious science minister. And he has this website, www.spiritualpassages.org, where you can sign up to get a daily ref reflection where he takes some topical thing from out in the world, and then there'll be a quote, and then he writes an affirmative prayer. This was his daily reflection for St. Patty's Day, this March 17th. St. Patrick was born in Scotland in the 5th century. At the age of 16, he was captured by Irish pirates, and sold into slavery. He escaped after years and entered the monastery of St. Martin in France. After becoming a cleric, he returned to Ireland where he faced imprisonment or execution. But he survived to preach and teach, to build churches and schools. He became not just a saint, but a patron saint, a benefactor, a champion, a mentor. And the quote is actually from St. Patrick's writings. And I want you to see how this writing kind of has the same meaning of our prayer for protection. May the strength of God pilot us. May the wisdom of God instruct us. May the hand of God protect us. May the word of God Direct us. Be always ours this day and forevermore. St. Patrick. And then Reverend Scott offers this affirmative prayer. Infinite presence. I give thanks for the mentoring spirit in us all. Today I see the champion, the saint in my brothers and sisters. And I celebrate the divine potential in each. Top of the morning to us all, wishing us all the joy our hearts can hold. Thank you, God, forever. So if you would like to get daily reflections, you can go to www.spiritualpassage.org and sign up for that email message. It's quite lovely. Today is our third week in the Lenten journey. And this is an important part of our journey. We're talking about divine guidance. Now we started this Lent where I invited you to join me in this Lenten journey to hold the highest truth. Not all the time, but to continue to lift up and see the highest truth. And then I talked last week about walking in faith. That Once we see a high truth, it's how do I get there? And that's adopting a deeper personal relationship with God, knowing we're never alone. And this week, it's divine guidance. Divine guidance is there for us all the time. In every situation, always available. And I start this discussion by turning to the wisdom of Martha Smock. This woman has written some powerful books that do inspire me. She was the head of silent, or, or Daily Word for many, many years. Here she says, The opening of your mind, heart, and life to the guidance of spirit, is the beginning, not the end of wisdom. Inspiration may come like a flash of light, but the teaching of the spirit of truth 
is steady and abiding. We can get an instant download. Right, Leslie? We can get something so clear, it's like getting struck by lightning. Only it doesn't hurt like that. Thirty-four years ago, I was minding my own business. <laughs> Having a lovely day. It was a, a symposium. There's all this stuff going on. And, and I was on work work study, and, and they said, oh, well, when the videographer arrives, make sure that all goes smoothly. I have a theater background. I, I can do that. So I go out. I step outside. In the second my eyes see Owen, I know I'm going to spend the rest of my life with that man. And I hadn't even met him yet. And 34 years later, we're still doing the journey. It can come like a flash of light. But God doesn't need to be dramatic. God is. And a steady, abiding truth is always available to us if we're willing to listen. To listen. To listen. Martha Smock continues to say, our first need when we pray for guidance is the need to let go our worry and concern. To let go of our fears and doubts and leave it all to God. We can place the situation without reservation in God's care. I have to admit, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. I mean, it took seconds for me to be reactive and in a really bad mood. You can ask Owen. <laughs> and you think I'm enthusiastic and, and, and effusive on Sunday? Just watch me in a bad mood. <laughs> I can be just as loud. And I went into meditation, 30 minutes. And to myself, I said every four-letter word I knew. And then I breathed some more. And I let go. I kind of vented that out. And then I could just be present. Just, and then what God told me to do, Listen to what you invited everyone else to do for this Lenten season. Lift up to the high truth. And so I started doing that. Taking my own advice and lifting it up. I'm all ready for the day. I have everything that I need. God is with me with every breath and every, every step and everything is fine. On the wide scope, you know, get zo zoomed in on the ikpuyak, the problem. If we just back up and take a wide view, that doesn't even have any energy to it. Giving our fear and our concern to God can be simple as just turning it over. We don't have to figure it out first. Like if it was a letter, we don't have to go, oh God, I have this fear and, and this is where it comes from. And yeah, that is it. Oh, and I want you to know this detail because all oh, this is. You don't have to do that with God. We can just turn it over. God takes that energy, it's all love anyway. Breathing, turning within, praying for guidance and with the clarity to lift our heart and our mind up to the highest truth. 
rather than giving way to the stinking feelings, the pity pot, the shame, and the blame, and the criticism, and the loneliness. Ever been there? It's no fun to be there. And all it takes is lifting it up, giving that fear and that doubt and that shame to God, our, our greatest friend and ally in every moment. Thank you, God. And then we're ready for divine guidance. Reverend Kathy Beasley wrote the passage that led us to this talk today, Divine Guidance, and it's in this Release and Renew 2022, this beautiful Lenten booklet. If you want a copy of it, the pamphlets are right there on that welcome table. She says, Divine Guidance is listening for the silent call of the soul. Divine Guidance is listening with a silent call of the soul. It's noticing one's breath, feeling the movement of air in and out, and noticing everything happening at the moment, being fully present. And if we can be fully present and give anything that doesn't resemble love to God, we're ready, we're open, and feel the movement of air in and out. Our whole body is an instrument that receives information and senses the world and when we can be right here present, we're where, who we're sitting with. What do we hear? What do we smell? How does our belly feel? How does our back feel? How does our body feel? That's presencing ourselves. And we're not alone. Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, puts forth this powerful truth. There are two ways to get understanding. One is to follow the guidance of spirit that dwells within. And the other is to go blindly ahead and learn by hard experience. By the way, I've got a master in that degree. I know what a two-by-four feels when it knocks me up the side of the head. I know when doors close on me. I know when I stumble and fall. And I've, I've learned from those experiences. Like, <laughs> I stub my toe on that coffee table a couple of times. Why don't I walk around it rather than into it? And lo and behold, I'm teachable. I don't stub my toe on it anymore. But if we follow divine guidance within us, it's the easier, softer way. And sometimes the guidance doesn't look real sweet. Sometimes guidance is really messy. But if we follow it, if we trust it, sometimes we have to go through the mud to get to the water. Sometimes we've got to go through the fog to get to where we're going. But we're all, always given exactly what we need to arrive where we're going. There's two ways to get understanding. One with God or just wing it. Turning back to Martha Smock, she brings forth this wisdom. When you do not know how to proceed in some matter, still your thoughts and wait 
quietly for inner direction. It always comes as you're truly receptive and in a listening frame of mind. That must be an encouraging thing, either that it's just to move on to the next idea. I love signals. It's beautiful. This morning, I had that issue. I needed to calm my mind before I could invite presence. I had to calm my mind before I, I could get to a place to do what I needed to do today. And it was because I was willing to slow down the thought To be a vessel, to listen, to receive clarity, to be open, to know that I am never alone. And there's this magnificent, intimate friend, God, that wants the best for me that holds the light of love no matter what. Because God doesn't care if I take his direction or not. God doesn't care if I decide to just go blindly ahead and do it my own way. God loves me no matter what. And still, all I need do is drop the guard, and connect with the spirit within. And from that listening frame of mind, I receive guidance. Now, we can receive guidance from within us. We can receive guidance by listening to music, or singing music, or reading, or from our children, or grandchildren, or something Amazingly enough, sometimes you just turn on the television and something comes at you, you go, oh! Not all the time with television, but it can happen. Because God's everywhere present in forming us and nurturing us. We have that guidance system that's embedded in us. We don't need ways or some GPS device outside of us. It's in us. And then turning back to Kathleen Beasley from this wonderful passage today in this pamphlet. Guidance only matters if you're willing to trust it and go where it leads us. Know this. Love is always listening to us and for us. Be willing to listen with your whole being and know that you're always divinely guided in every moment. That could be like tattooed on the inside of our brain. It's so profound. We're given guidance. Guidance in, in all ways in our life. To do this, don't do that. Turn right, turn left. Achieve this, go this way. Breathe, let go. Surrender, take a nap. The nudges are always there to provide where we're going. This is why lifting ourselves up and holding the highest truth and walking in faith, one with God, listening to guidance and trusting it. Because often we're given the direction and we'll go, how am I going to do that? 
Like when I got the download to become an ordained unity minister. It's like, how do I do that? Do I even want to do that? And by saying yes, it's led me here. What a blessing. What a blessing. Because we don't need to know how. We just need to know what direction to go. And then as we go, God gives us everything we need to do what is ours to do. Divine guidance is ours. Let it be so. Thank you. on the water